We've all seen the debates across Twitter, Reddit, and everywhere else with people arguing about who deserves the fight of the year title like they're getting paid to make the choice. And with each fight, the arguments for Alex Pajeda or Ilya Taporia just get stronger. But let's keep it a buck. Recency bias is real for goldfish memories like Lala over here. And to be fair, we need to look at the full story. Today, we're going to dive into the critical factors for Fighter of the Year. Championship fights and defenses. Defenses? Whose fences? Championship fights and defenses. Who secured titles and defended them under pressure? Level of opposition. Were they facing the best fighters or was the path a bit easier? Impact beyond the octagon. Who made the biggest impact on the UFC calendar? It's kind of a no-brainer. We were anxious to hear what our friends in the space had to say about each contender, so stick around and watch our reactions to what our friends in the space had to say about each contender. We're bringing all their opinions and insights to help you decide who deserves to be crowned Fighter of the Year. Let's get it. Let's take a look at the first key factor, championship fights and defenses, or defenses as some people say. I don't know which one is right. So let's walk through what's happened this year. UFC 298, February 18th, 2024, Ilya Taporia takes on Alexander Volkanovsky. And Taporia delivered a major upset by knocking out Alexander Volkanovsky, marking the end of Volkanovsky's reign. So fast forward to UFC 300, April 13th. Alex Pajeda takes on former champion Jamal Hill. <laughs> like, like you look cooked, bro. <laughs> Pajeda, the former middleweight champ, filled in on short notice to defend his light heavyweight championship against the former champion Jamal Hill. Pajeda's devastating KO yeah. crowned him as the god. The god. <laughs> <laughs> Moving forward to UFC 303. Again, we got Alex Pajeda in the spotlight, this time in a rematch against Yuri Prohoshka. He defended this is the like rematch. He, yeah, yeah. He defended his title against Yuri Prohoshka in a highly anticipated rematch. I mean, I guess we were all looking forward to this, right? If y'all can remember back to June. If he didn't do this, people were going to be like, It was an endless package. But he once again delivered another KO, showcasing his superior striking against Prohoshka and proving once and for all that Prohoshka is no match for him. Moving forward, UFC 307, October 5th. Alex Pajeda, this time in Salt Lake City, takes on Khalil Roundtree Jr. He's continuing his reign of terror in the light heavyweight division. Despite a valiant effort from Roundtree Jr., it was another KO victory for Alex Pajeda, further establishing his knockout prowess at light heavyweight. The fight deepened Pajeda's reputation as one of the most lethal strikers across all divisions, sparking talk about his legacy and who could possibly challenge him. With each KO victory, Pajeda seemed to solidify himself as a modern legend in the UFC, feared for his sheer knockout power. We got to talk about this one. We could fast forward. Everybody knows this one. No, we got to lay it out on the table for him because, uh, you know, you know how people do. People forget. UFC 308, October 26. Ilya Taporia takes on the BMF champion, Max Bless Holloway. The Max is Bless. <laughs> He's known for his chin, endurance, and his technical striking. Taporia achieved yet another KO. It's a thing going on in this thing. KO's all over the place. Cracking the legendary chin of Max Holloway and solidifying his status as champion. This win over Holloway added another high profile victory to Taporia's record, raising discussions about his future as a featherweight champ. Fans and analysts alike started to compare Taporia's skill set to those of former champions, speculating how long his reign might last. Come on, Diego, come shut this man down. My six, and we're about to see what happens. Uh, Blacks express, it's over, my friend. The Blacks is blessed, over. Blacks express, brother. 
Bless Express. Bless, bless Express. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Bless Express. Bless Matt, Express. What, what have Express. you thought? To fully appreciate each fighter's accomplishments, we need to consider their opponents. Pajeda's matchups included Hill, Prohashka, and Roundtree. All dangerous fighters, but each with unique context. Yuri was a rematch. Hill was recovering from injury, and Roundtree was ranked number eight. Pajeda still demonstrated power and precision. Precision. Precision, securing knockouts in every fight. Tapuria, on the other hand, took on Volkanovski, a champ coming back from two consecutive losses at lightweight, one of which was a short notice knockout loss to Islam. I drink your milkshake, Makachev. I drink your milkshake. I drink it up. Don't bully me, Daniel. Yeah. Two months prior to facing Ilya at UFC 298. Volk had never been knocked out before Islam. He decided to traumatize us yet again by getting knocked out at UFC 298 by Ilya Tuporia. Tuporia then defended against Holloway, who was also returning from lightweight after his spectacular knockout to Justin Gaethje. Either way, both fighters are known for durability, making Tuporia's ability to finish them all the more impressive considering his strong grappling background. All right, so let's, let's take a look at the stats. So first looking at their efficiency, Pajeda displayed a superior striking accuracy and a higher percentage of head strikes in 2024, and his ability to finish opponents decisively with fewer strikes highlights his power and precision. Thinking about adaptability, Tapuria showed versatility balancing between head, body, and leg strikes more evenly than Pajeda. His moderate striking accuracy coupled with steady pace allowed him to outlast and finish highly skilled opponents. Thinking about their impact, Pajeda's ability to finish three consecutive fights without control emphasizes his knockout prowess and reliability as a finisher in the light heavyweight division. Tapuria's wins in featherweight, however, are equally impressive given his opponent's reputations for toughness. Hey, hey. Let's take a look at Octagon time for Poria's two little fights and then Pajeda's um two little fights? That's disrespectful. Um, you know, outstanding three fights. Pajeda with his three fights spent about twenty eight minutes in the octagon while Taporia in just two fights took a little over twenty minutes to secure his wins. It's worth noting the broader impact each fighter had beyond their fights. Pajeda saved three key events, including UFC 300 and 303, and saving us from suffering through Raquel Pennington versus Juliana Pena as a headliner. The pressure of carrying these events and delivering finishes each time is no small feat. His role in sustaining the UFC's event lineup adds weight to his 2024 Fighter of the Year case. That's undeniable. All right, so let's take a gander at how Ilya is making waves outside the octagon. All right, let's be fair. So if he hadn't kept racking up wins, the UFC probably wouldn't have pushed for an event in Spain, which, as we all hear, isn't the easiest place to promote MMA because, because the arenas are all backed up there. Have you looked at the Bernabeu, Real Madrid's football stadium? We've looked at everyone. Well, they don't have roofs in, in Spain, I don't think. They'll have no. roofs. So I'm not doing an outdoor arena now. But, but if it's got a roof? Yeah. If, if that's what we would have to do. Yeah, you have to have a roof. And a Daniel roof? No roof. No, no roof. No roof. So his winning streak has obviously nudged the UFC to expand its reach, opening up new doors in untapped markets with no roofs. But Taporia's success isn't just about his own career. It's also setting up the stage for UFC to continue to grow globally. Very true. I almost didn't get out of the grow globally. Grow globally. This discussion gets even more exciting when you think about age and experience. At 37 years old, 37 seasons, y'all. Pajeda's impressive 46 and 9 overall combat record shows his dedication and resilience over the years. On the other hand, you have Taporia, who's just 27 and holds a perfect 16 and 0 record. Sparkling. Ding. He's a rising star who can rule the scene for a long time. It's kind of hard to get that one out. It's a classic clash between someone who's been consistently great and a young undefeated fighter, each bringing their own strength and challenges to the table. So like we mentioned earlier, we've been anxious to hear what our friends in the MMA community had to say. 
So uh, let's see what they had to say together. About to hear some bullshit. I'm sure they okay. have won- wonderful insights. WGS, we gonna see. Could be some bullshit. I don't know though. You, you, you <laughs> never know. What's going on, YouTube? Shout out to Jax at Making the Walk MMA for having me on. The 2024 UFC Fighter of the Year might be one of the toughest there has ever been. Alex Pereira's three title defenses in 175 days, all by KO. He saved UFC 300. He saved UFC 303 after Connor pulled out. Saved UFC 307 from being a Raquel Pennant and Juliana Pena headliner versus Ilya Taporia's two title wins, knocking out Alexander Volkanovsky and Max Holloway, two of the greatest featherweights and two of the greatest fighters of all time in -hmm. the same year. Before Mm -hmm. UFC 308, I would have said Alex had it locked up. I don't think there's a wrong answer here, but Ilya stole the show with the quality of those wins. And I think he's the UFC's fighter year for 2024. Man, that boy is smart. That boy is smart. No Texas Roadhouse rolls for you. Crossover. No, it's it, that's it, it. It's true. There's there's not you know a, a right or wrong answer here, um, depending on who you're talking to. I like how you put it together though. He, I like how yeah. you put it together. Yeah, he set me up for failure. I thought he was gonna make the right choice. He he did. I think he did. <laughs> no, thank you, Jay. All right. Normally, you know, and normally me and him don't agree on stuff. Y'all wouldn't know that. But like me and him differ so often. But uh yeah, I think we I think we aligned on that one. All right, so next up we got Ola from the Fight Week show. He's a uh, he's always on on top of things. Let's see what he says here. Ola, don't do me wrong. Yeah, big shout out to my boy making a walk, Jax, on this video. Right. I'm here to let you know who I think should be fighter of the year and why. I think I've been back and forth on this, but <laughs> I'm leaning towards Ilya Tupira. I think Ilya Tupira hmm. has been on the tier um, since being in the UFC. He's, he's just decapitating people. He's putting people away. But for me, putting Vogue and another legend like Max Holloway away in the fashion that he did. And I know Poiton has been absolutely fantastic with, you know, putting away people like Jamal Hill, Prohaska, and even Khalil Roundtree, who I rate a lot. But the way Ilya Tupura has handled the business, the the fashion that is just eviscerated this this legends in Vogue and Max, Holl- and Max Holloway. Um, yeah, for me. Yeah, I, I gotta give it to Ilya Tapira, and it hurts me. But facts are the facts. <laughs> Salute to you, Jax. Big love. You know Move he said. Right t- he said two very <laughs> important words: eviscerating uh-huh. and decapitating. Those are two yeah. very important important words. Thanks, Ola. Yeah, I heard them. For 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 letting the people know what's going on. Very colorful language, Ola. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> All right. In honor of Ola, let's see who's next on the ducket. <laughs> oh shit! My Fight bro. night, Frankie. My bro, Francis. I just gonna press play. I already know what this is gonna be. No question. <laughs> All right, what's popping? Um, making the Walk Nation. This is your boy Fight Like Frankie, uh, recording out of Bangkok, Thailand. I'm about um, I was actually going to throw a curveball in here and play Charles play. Johnson, who was the most active fighter on the roster this year. Got five wins, um, no losses, of course. But you know, if beating up uh, five little kids was enough to get you fired of the year, then I'd be <laughs> shooing for the uh, award this year myself. Now, obviously, the choice has got to be between Ilya Superior and um, Alex Pereira. And as, as tough as this is to admit, I'm only rec- I've only recently become a really big fan of his. You gotta go with Ilya Tapuria. I think the nature mm. of the wins, the people he beat, the stakes that were on it, and how much he's risen uh, worldwide as a face of the organization, it has to be him. Um, Alex Pereira obviously had a great year as well. 
but I never ever liked the, the Kindle fight, which everyone on my channel would know. Um, I know beating Yuri is impressive as well, but I wouldn't be surprised if that guy puts his shoes on the wrong feet in the morning. <laughs> anyway, you got, got, for me, it's got to be Elliot Superior. Had, a, had an amazing year. Mm. Fucking knocked out my soul. And that can never be taken away from him. Um, two top 10 fighters beaten this year. For me, is undeniable. Uh, thanks for letting me be on the video, bro. Catch you soon. We love you, Frankie. You made the wrong choice, but we, we absolutely love you. And uh, thanks for Man. having us on the show. Well. I do know how he feels that about crazy. that boy is so crazy he said uh <laughs> what do you say i wouldn't be surprised if he put his shoes on backwards in the morning <laughs> yeah he might man and then he said uh charles johnson that's a that's an honorable mention charles johnson has had a, 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 an amazing year but um you know amazing yeah, year man. interesting haircut but amazing year um but he, he chose right man i think it is Ilya. i think maybe i don't really know I don't yeah, know. yeah, it's it's a tough choice. All, all good points. Um, the stakes, I think, was really important that he said there. Uh, like we mentioned earlier, get mm -hmm. that Spain market. You know, got to get in there. So yeah, it's important. Plus, I think, I think, Ilya, Ilya really wants to move up and uh, and fight Islam. That could also be what he was re referring to. Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe not. I don't know, but it does yep. open up the door to that conversation for sure for sure and you know in the words of frankie if he does move up it could be a disaster it could be a that disaster <laughs> i love how you said that <laughs> <laughs> yeah i like the the you know the light flex i'm in bangkok oh shit okay yeah you see you happy see the birthday, soccer in the background the yeah happy birthday for oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah my boy jake, jake gerber, gerber. Okay, if y'all don't know Jake Gerber, and first of all, just just listen to the voice. The voice is going to take you directly to the fights. And then he has amazing insight as well. Go ahead, drop it on him. Okay. Play the clip. So who do I think is the 2024 Fighter of the Year? I've been going back and forth on this one because I think Alex Pineda and Ilya Taporia are both very deserving of this award. I got to go with Ilya Taporia, man. It is very, very hard to overlook back-to-back -back KO, KO wins over two of the greatest featherweights of all time. The first one at UFC 298 against Alexander Volkanovsky, and the second one coming recently at UFC 308 over Max Holloway. I mean, no one has ever KO'd Max Holloway. So to be the first person to do that is absolutely spectacular. So the weight of those two wins that's just very hard to deny in my opinion, but shout out to Alex Pineda because man, three title defenses on a year, short notice, saving cards, doing all these different things, beating a former champion in Hill, former champion in Prohaska, and then putting on a fun fight with Khalil Roundtree, but I still got to give the edge to Ilya Taporia because of the quality of those wins. Brought to you by Modelo. <laughs> I like him. I, I I gotta check out his stuff. I um. No nah, man, Jake is I mean, on point. His lives are on point. Uh, you know, he's just he he's super dope all the way around. And his Twitter is hilarious. He says some funny stuff, but some stuff that's actually true. But um, Jake, I appreciate you uh, dropping this in there for us, man, for sure. Okay, so I didn't even have to ask you Jax who this was I just it's a face I haven't seen before I didn't even look at the background but as soon as I opened this up I knew immediately this is uh, the producer over at Fight Week Show right he's a producer right yeah um, Leroy also known as Buck Leroy I still don't know why they do that to you man but let's hear what you have to say <laughs> I fully expect uh, the right answer Right. I mean, let's see. We'll see. So the question of 2024's Fighter of the Year, it really comes down to two names in my mind, both from the UFC, uh, Ilya Taporia and Alex Pereira. Like Ilya did just crack the toughest chin in the UFC after beating the arguable GOAT, uh, Alexander Volkanovsky. But I think ultimately you'd have to give it to Alex Pereira. Like three title defenses in six months, uh, including a a short notice replacement main event for UFC 300 to save the card uh, where he knocked out Jamal Hill. 
I mean, he's just been on an absolute tear. I would I would have to say Paul Town would be my fighter of the year in 2024. Saved 300. Mm-hmm. An event for Conor <clears throat> McGregor. Ilya would never. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Well, here, here's, here's how I separate them. Just for y'all, you know, the people who sent the videos, very smart people, very learned MMA scholars. Um, hey, Charles. <laughs> you got to do the little <laughs> hands in there. <laughs> very smart people. They're not eating dogs. They're not eating the cats or the pets. <laughs> um, what I would say to that is I think that Alice Pajeda is the most valuable fighter. But I think there's a distinction between the most valuable fighter and the fighter of the year. So keep that in mind. When you look at most valuable fighter, you you are thinking about business. And I feel like this is this business does take a part of this, but I think it's more about what happened in there and who it happened against. So I'm just saying, keep that in mind. Moving right along. Let's see. Okay. I'm yeah. excited for this one. I Almighty by hoodie, almighty by nature. <laughs> <laughs> this is off the cuff, McDane, rambling dad, um, usually on the Fight Week show. This man is <clears throat> hilarious. Don't say shit to this man. He will eat you alive. Yes, he this will. could go either way, right? I have no fucking idea. I just have nothing but faith that. You know, he picks. I, I think I think he's gonna have a great take. So, what do you think? Where do you think he's going? He normally does. He normally does. Occasionally, he he says something wild, but uh, he he backs up everything that he says. So, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see what he says. Ah, uh, come on, McDane. Well, it's time to pick fighter of the year. So for me, it comes down to three people. We've got Diego Lopez taking out Sadiq Youssef, Danny Gay, and mm. then Brian Ortega in spectacular fashion. You've also got Ilya Taporier beating Alexander Volkanovsky for the featherweight title and then knocking out Max Holloway and being the first man to ever do it. You've then got Alex Pereira, the face of the company. He's absolutely carried this promotion throughout the year, taking out Jamal Hill. Then he took out Yera Prochaska in a second fight. And then he also went on to have an absolute war and potentially fight of the year against Khalil Roundtree. Personally, I'm going to be giving it to Alex Pereira. I think he's just been unbelievable in his market ability and the performances that he's been putting on. Man's got a death touch. And he deserves it. The death touch. The face of the UFC. He they is the face of the UFC. Up, they don't want any Muppet faces in the UFC. Okay, you know what I'm saying? He is if the face of the UFC. If you go to ESPN, I just want y'all to take a look. Who's right there? Because it's not. Conor McGregor. <laughs> That's who it is. That's the who it is. of the UFC. He is the current fighter face of the UFC. I will admit that for Death sure. Um, yeah. I mean, I say admit as if I'm going against Alex. I'm not going against Alex. I mean, I still think that this is still up in the air. Um, even though the recency part of it does have me leaning towards Ilya, I can still be swayed. Like, And everybody has made some amazing points on both sides of it. And it's like, it's so hard to pick for me on who should be the one and I just don't know but shout out to uh, McDane Jordan the Rambling Dad podcast um, another great listen he has some really good interviews on there as well let's see who we got got next oh I see what you I see what you did there to say my name <laughs> <laughs> he says say my name say my name <laughs> <laughs> That would be yeah. the best reaction I saw. And for for y'all that don't um, make it to the uh, watch alongs, y'all definitely need to do that. On the last one, uh, y'all hit the, the say my name, the Destiny's Child say my name uh, when uh, Ilya did the unspeakable to Max Holloway. But um, yeah, this is y'all hey, from you? from kick him in the head. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm curious what he has to say. Very curious. Whatever it is, put some respect on the name, like you said. <laughs> Hi, this is Yao from the Kick Him in the Head podcast. My Kick fight of 24 has to undeniably be Alex Portan Pereira. Why? 
first fight of the year, he defeated Jamal Hill in the most memeable way. Second fight of the year, he won by kick him in the head when he defeated Yuri Prohaska by KO. Third fight of the year, he bludgeons the hardest hitter in the division, Khalil Roundtree. He might fight for the fourth time this year against Muhammad Ankalaev. He is the most dominant champion that the UFC has. So for me, Alex Portan Pereira has to be the fighter of the year for 2024. At Head Kick Pod, follow, like, subscribe on all platforms. And then he tagged you at the end. Then he, he dropped I the tags. <laughs> I love him, dude. He <laughs> got the little Cheshire smile cat. Damn, I can't even talk. I'm being so damn funny. The Cheshire cat smile at the end was funny as shit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Andrew, just, you know, he reminded you, you know, kick him in the head. Now, what I will say, though, is um, if he does fight Ankalaev and beats Ankalaev, in December, uh, I don't think it's a question anymore. I don't think it's even a conversation. Man, if this man fights in the fourth quarter, he's, I can't, I couldn't deal with it. I don't think, I don't think. It, 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 it would be one of the most legendary runs. It would be up there, like competing with what John Jones did at light heavyweight when he um, beat the people that he beat all in a row. It would be it would be pretty impressive, even though the the caliber of names are not the same. It's the time frame in which he did it that's impressive, and and the age at which he did it as well. I think. Yeah. Um, dude, yeah. if he's he the oldest fights, champion, mm-hmm. he's the most seasoned champion, seasoned. Yeah, you know? he's got a lot of season. But if <laughs> yes, and it's all Chama seasoning. Chama, Chama, <laughs> Chama. I mean, dude, fucking if he fights Uncle Lamb, I'm going to be honest, I'm kind of nervous about that fight. But I don't think that happens at the end of this year. We don't fucking know, okay? Yao has visions as well. Who fucking... <laughs> we don't know. We're going to find know. out. Q4 2024. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Q4 uh, 2024. Yeah, we're going to find out. We're going to see. So. So, what do you, what, what do you think? Who are you picking? Fighter man. Here. All right. After all that we've been through in researching and looking at everything, I am still at the same spot that I was in before. I am torn I actually feel that this is one of the few years that you really just give both of them the award I think you just give it both give it to both of them because the it's the you're splitting hairs trying to figure out who it goes to and I feel like they've equally done amazing things in their own right and you gotta just break it in half and give it to both of them yeah I think um, I'm not as diplomatic. I feel like the best I can do is like a, a, a BMF belt transfer to Ilya and fire the year will go to Alex. The man is 37 years old doing this. Um, I, I will say I think I, I was almost swayed. I almost convinced myself when I was thinking of Ilya um, and the impact that he's making not just this year but for the future and tapping into that spain market but i'm gonna give it to alex this the moments themselves to me were bigger um but i just like you said like you and everybody else has said it's hard to pick between the two and you can't belittle either side i don't think but gotta go alex yeah. That, that's fair. It's fair. It's hard. It's hard to argue against um, either one of them, to be honest. Mm-hmm. But yeah. which leads me to the question that I'm going to throw out to everybody else. Straight up, who do you think is the fighter of the year, and why? I want to see that down in the comments. Drop that down in the comments and let us know. 
and you know maybe you'll sway us i don't know but it's a debate that is going to live on until whomever the powers that be are decide who it is so till next time Thank you.